So I want to do a quick video uh, going through the intuition and logic of top and bottom balancing, why it's so important, and why your cells won't actually stay balanced during your charge and discharge cycle, uh, if, even if you are top or bottom balanced. So let's take a look at this. Uh, let's say you have three cells, right? So imagine we have three cells, and the length of each cell is its capacity, right? So the longer cells are the ones with more capacity. Remember that our cells, uh, they're done ch charging at 2.5 volts if we're doing lithium iron phosphate, and they fully charge up to 3.65 volts, right? And imagine the line I draw here, this horizontal line. This line is the current amount of power that the cells have and what we're gonna observe. Um, so the cells are, let's say, charged up to here, right? And this is what we observe. We observe whatever this voltage is, right? And the important thing to keep in mind when we have our cells is that lithium iron phosphate has an extremely flat um, voltage curve, right? Like at the very beginning, uh, you go up really fast to around 3.2 volts. Then you hang out for between 3.2 and 3.4 volts for a really long time. And then the voltage spikes when you're filling up from that last 90 to 100%. Okay? So that's what's going on here. We're taking our cells... Well, this the voltage curve just explains how much capacity you have. Whoops, I shouldn't even draw that there. It should be up here, 3.65. And we go from zero to 100% capacity. That's what a voltage curve is, right? It's telling us that when we have no capacity, we're going to observe 2.5 volts on the cells. And then when we have full capacity, we're going to observe 3.65 volts. And when we're in the middle, we'll observe something like 3.25 volts. Sorry, 3.25 volts. And that's at around 50%. Okay, so that's the voltage curve. And here we have three cells and imagine these cells are wired in series into a battery. Okay, and all we do when we, we first start, we haven't balanced these cells. We've just got them uh, from the factory. We haven't balanced them. And we just, we go in and we observe the voltage, right, at, from this line. And what we're getting when we get these cells is we, we see this voltage and maybe we see for the first cell, we see something like, you know, 3.29 or then we see something like 3.35, uh, and then we see something like uh, 3.25. And we think, hey, look, the biggest gap is between these two, and that's just 10 millivolts. Uh, sorry, 0.1 volt. Let me erase that. Sorry, that's just 0.1 volt, 100 millivolts difference. They're pretty balanced. Let's just use them as is, right? That's what we think to ourselves. Okay, we don't, I don't need to balance. My cell voltages are pretty close to each other, right? Well, what's going to happen if I don't balance? Let's think about that theoretically. Okay, I'm not going to balance. Now let's say I charge up my cells and I've got a BMS, right? We always want to use a BMS, which is going to stop charging as soon as the one cell gets to 3.65 volts and it'll stop discharging the battery as soon as one cell gets to 2.5 volts, right? So as soon as we hit the top or the bottom, the BMS would stop. So let's imagine we charge this up. When we're charging that up, that's just moving this line up, right? That means we're going to go higher and higher and higher and higher and higher, and we're going to move up together. Every cell is going to get an equal amount of energy, right? And then we're going to have to stop because this middle cell now is at full capacity, right? The, the cells on the outside aren't at full capacity, but the middle cell is at full capacity. So we've got to stop. The BMS is going to click into place, and we're done. Okay. So we filled up our battery. We know that a couple cells could take more, but one cell's full. So, hey, we're, this is as full as we can get. We can't give any more power to the battery without giving power to that middle cell, which would overcharge it. So let's discharge. Okay, we're going to discharge all the way. We'll discharge all the way. We're doing a capacity. Imagine we're doing a capacity test. We keep discharging, and then we get to the bottom. Well, now we have to stop again because the, this third cell on the right, this one ran out of power. Okay? So what's going to happen? is instead of getting the capacity of the lowest capacity cell, which is ideal performance, we'll get this kind of capacity from here to here, right? From the top of cell two to the bottom of cell three, we're gonna get this much capacity, right? That's not as much capacity as this cell. Imagine this was the smallest cell. It's not as much capacity as the smallest cell could possibly get us. Our battery is gonna underperform. We're leaving extra energy and power on the table, okay? Because now cell two is uh, cell two is relatively speaking overcharged relative to the rest of the cells. That means when time comes, it charges up 
it fills up too fast because it started out with too much power to begin with. And cell three here, this was relatively undercharged, which means that when we go to discharge, it's gonna run out of power first because when everyone, all the cells were put in series, it had too little power to start. So we don't get the full capacity of our smallest cell, which is cell two. We actually get less than that. We don't get the full capacity rating of our cells because we didn't bother to balance. Now, let's go back in and let's try something different. Let's say we got our cells and we immediately top balanced. Well, what does top balancing look like? Top balancing is when we take each cell and we ensure that each cell, we put them in parallel and we ensure that each cell is at 3.65 volts when we put them in uh, series together, right? So before we put them in series, we put all our cells in parallel and we make sure the batteries, all every single battery cell has exactly the same voltage. So what that means in practice is this. That means we, hey, our batteries, let's say we put them in parallel, they're at 3.65, everything's perfect, then we put them in series together, we've made our battery from our battery cells. Well, when we first do that, we're gonna see that our battery, each battery cell is identical. They're all gonna be at 3.65 together, right? 3.65, they're all at 3.65 together, okay? When we go to discharge, we're gonna discharge, we're gonna keep going, keep going, and then we're gonna get stuck at the bottom of cell two, right? Cell two, we went all the way to the bottom, we ran out of power. Cell three, cell one, they've still got some power, but cell two ran out of power, right? And cell two didn't run out of power because it was relatively underpowered to start, it ran out of uh, power because it had lower capacity, right? Cell two just has less capacity than the other two cells. And this is gonna be true for any group of cells you buy, even if they're matched, there's gonna be variations in capacity. Okay, now when we go to charge it up again, guess what? We hit the bot top of all three cells pretty much simultaneously. So now, instead of just getting that really small amount of power, we're gonna get the full capacity of our smallest cell, right? So in this case, it's cell two. We're getting the full capacity from cell two, and that's the best our battery pack can do, right? We can never do better than, the, than, than just the smallest capacity cell in our battery pack but we can at least ensure that we're getting the best capacity we can from our smallest cell. And that's the whole point of top balancing. Bottom balancing is the exact same thing, but from the other direction. Importantly though, one thing I wanna point out is when we're looking at this, all we're doing is ensuring that we're getting this middle cell. But what happens when we get to the bottom of our discharge? When we get to our bottom of our discharge, cell two is at 2.5 volts. But remember, cell three and cell one, they still have extra capacity. So cell three might be at three volts. Cell one might be at 2.7 volts. Actually, cell one looks like it's got more, but you know what I mean. Basically, these two cells, cell one and cell three, they still have capacity and their voltages are gonna be higher than cell twos. So they're gonna look out of balance. You'll say, hey, cell three is, has a much higher balance than cell two point five than cell, cell two, and cell three has a much uh, cell one has a higher voltage than cell two, right? These have a voltage difference of 0.2, and these have a voltage difference of 0.5, and these two have a voltage difference of 0.3. So your cells look completely out of balance. You're like, wait a second, I spent so much time to put my cells in balance. I put them all at the exact same voltage. Now when I discharge, they're all at different voltages. What's going on? Why can't my cells stay in balance? Well, they are still in balance, but they're only gonna look like they're identically balanced at the top of the curve, right? At the top of the curve, they're all at the exact same capacity. They're all at 100%. But because they might have different capacities in their cells, when you get down to the very bottom of the smallest cell, well, guess what? The cells one and three still have power left over, right? So they're going to start leaving their balance as soon as you leave the very top. So even when you're at 50%, even when each cell is, has, has is even, well, actually no cell, when you're back down, there's no such thing as 50%. You could be at 50% for the battery, but even at your, when you're at 50% of the battery, which means you're at 50% of cell two, cell one and cell three are actually have greater than 50% capacity, right? Because they always have greater capacity than cell two. So even as you're discharging, your batteries are gonna immediately, your battery cells are gonna immediately appear like they're not in balance. And that's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until you hit the very bottom of the smallest cell. And then they're gonna see the largest imbalance between your cells. And that's just because your cells are different capacities. When you fully charge them up again, they're gonna to look totally balanced again at the top. So if you, are, if you have top balanced your cells and yet you're seeing that they're not balanced anymore, if you're anywhere but the very top or anywhere but the location, the original voltage that you balance them at, 
you're going to see a difference in voltage. And that difference in voltage is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as the discharge, as they get closer to fully discharged. Okay? If you want to see if your cells are still balanced, you have to charge them all the way up again. If you top balance in the first place, you have to charge them all the way up again and make sure and see that, okay, when my, all my cells are, when I, when I try to charge my battery to fully charge, are all my cells close to each other? That's how you check if your cells, your top balance cells are still balanced. If you've charged them up all the way and one of them is at 3.65, one of them is at 3.65 and another one's at 3.5 and another one's at 3.4, that means you're not top balanced anymore. But don't look at the voltages when they're fully discharged. That doesn't tell you if they're balanced anymore. Okay? So top bal balancing ensures that we get the maximum capacity of our cells, in, in particular that we get the maximum capacity of our smallest cell. And it also ensure, and also it, it will entail your cells leaving balance as they discharge. Okay? Very quickly, let's look at bottom balancing. Uh, it's the exact same thing, but just flipped, right? So if we do bottom balancing, that means all our cells, we, we put our cells at the exact same voltage at their bottom voltage. So we made sure all our cells were 2.5 volts. We put them in parallel. They were all 2.5 volts together. And then when we did that, then we put them in series to make a battery. So what's going to happen is when we fully discharge our battery, all our voltages will be the same, right? When, when we get down to the very bottom of the battery uh, power, when you totally discharge it, all our cells should look like they're at the exact same voltage. But when we fully charge our battery all the way up, hey, we'll stop at the top of our smallest cell. This one's going to be 3.65. And these two are going to have extra capacity. And we're going to look really out of balance. This will be 3.65. This might be 3.5. This might be 3.4. We're going to see big voltage gaps between them and think, hey, I bought them balanced. Why aren't my cells still balanced? Well, it's just because you're at the opposite side of your voltage curve. Uh, of, of your like of your balance curve you could almost think of it right so now if you discharge and went back down again when you check on the bottom they should be bottom balanced they should still appear identical okay so i hope this video is useful if you do if you do find it useful please like or subscribe it actually took me a lot of time to put this together and, and think about how to explain this properly but it's really important to top bottom top and bottom balance your cells, not only for the health of your cells, but you'll get more capacity out of the battery you use for it. Uh, but definitely keep in mind that they're not going to stay at the same voltage as you charge and discharge them. When you, if you want to check to see if they're still top balanced, check when they're fully charged. When you want to see if they're still bottom balanced, check when they're almost fully discharged. Okay, that's how you know if your balance is holding. So I hope this was useful to people, and uh, please remember to like or subscribe. Um, and definitely ask comments. I try to answer every single comment in the questions. So put a comment below if you've got any questions. Thank you.